Hello and welcome to my channel and if you want to find out how to set a sluice up I'll do that today in a quick video for you. So this will be a, just a quick practical demonstration of how I would set up a sluice. Again, there's lots of other methods you can use, this is what works for me. And if you're new to it, I hope this can help you get some ideas. What you also need, I always carry a little bucket, a simple little bucket, it's a horse feeding bucket because it folds up and it doesn't weigh too much. I'm not going to break my back carrying a bucket load of dirt. A simple classifier, some gloves so you don't scratch your hands, and a scoop. I've had a look at the river today. It's a bit higher than usual. I'd normally sluice a bit further up there on this spot. However, I like the look of this, and I'll show you why. I've got a nice rock there I could put my bucket on, and I like the flow there. Two rocks either side, just giving me some nice flow of water and I can get it level there quite easily. And I'm not too far from areas that I want to be working as well today on these gravels. So, first of all, I'm going to put the sluice in. I'm going to look for a classic V. I want to see a V in here. I'm going to pack up underneath with some rocks until I get the right height. Again, what is the right height? You do get to know how your sluice runs. But I want normally probably about 20 mils of water there, not running terribly fast. Just going to play about with it now until we're somewhere near. It does take a little bit of time, but you'll know when it's right. There'll be a sweet spot somewhere. Now I'll also start to create a small dam wall so that water is being directed more to where I'm working with the sluice. I don't like that rock at the moment there. Okay, it's probably took me now about five minutes just to work the sluice. I don't really bother too much about the drop. I mean, yeah, there should be a certain drop, so many inches per feet. But what I find when I'm working with this sluice, when it's right, it clears here in good time, and it also clears down here. If it's not right, there's an imbalance. So I've already got a few handfuls of dirt just to see how it's looking at the moment. It's clearing some of the bigger ones. I'm also looking for the lines there. Is it balanced left to right? And to me, that's quite level both ways. And another good thing I look for is can I see that top mat? Can I physically look at it and inspect the goal with the flow? So I'm happy with that at the moment. It just needs to be secured so it doesn't go washing off downstream. So what I do, I tend to build up around that area using the flare. That should keep it in position. Right, I think we're good to go. Okay, we've got the sluice now set up over there. We're on an inside line of a gravel bar with fine gravels and a few heavies. So we're gonna quickly get a few scoops, fill the bucket and process the dirt and we'll see if there's any small flood gold because where we are now, it really has been high, the water. I think last week it was 2.5 meters high. That's really high. So when we talk about where are we on the river, this is a nice inside line. Things start to drop out with all these low pressure points where the bedrock is there, that'll cause things to drop out. This outcrop here of dirt and bedrock and trees allows all this to drop out very quickly. The finer, heavier things drop out on this side first. And then when we get a bit further down the, uh, the line, the heavier rocks start to fall. But this is all about being a new prospector. If you're new, trying to get into it, this is what I would do to try and find some of the good stuff. And believe me, it took me forever to find some. I was getting quite fed up with it in the end, but when you see that first speck of gold in your pan, you get the fever. So get the dirt, that's all the dirt looks like on this section. Simple gravels, classify it out, makes it easier to sluice, and that's your grade of material left behind. You could wash that as well, 
because there could be gold stuck to the small rocks. You can very quickly process this dirt. I don't know if there's gold in here. There could be. It might have all been taken by the Romans for all we know. And again, for all you experts out there, if you were to do it the proper way, this is a quick demonstration, you might do a test pan there, you might do a test pan there, and a test pan there, so you go across that looking for the goal line. But I just want to show you how I set my sluice up. Okay, there is the big rock. Perfect for me, that, for putting the bucket on, as well as kneeling down, but underneath here, I've got some knee pads, so if you're worried about my health and my knees, I've got it covered there. Right, get the scoop, not too much, and just gently feed it in like that. That's all you need to do, a nice gentle feed. It's clearing nicely there. It's also clearing here, it's not blocking up here. So again, that's a nice flow. I'm, I like that flow there, that's okay. Another thing is worth looking for inside the ripples is what they call exchange and deep down there you want the materials to be bouncing around and dancing so all the heavy particles are trying to get into the bottom of them ripples all the time You see there, it's clearing nicely. And if we look closely now, you can actually see. That's what I like about this sluice. You can see what is going on there. There's the material dancing around. That's the exchange going on. All the lighter particles will eventually fall out and down out into the river. I can already see some shiny after what, maybe two or three scoops. Okay, so yeah, there is some shiny on that top map. The top map helps you find the gold quicker. You can see it. So on there now, we've moved three of them. I'll show you in the bucket. That's all I've moved so far. And there is a nice little piece of gold there. Shiny, tiny gold. Probably another little speck to the left and to the right. And I maybe think another little piece down there. So this is all flood gold from the recent flooding we had the other day. One there. And one there. Now again, if I can share my experiences with you, and I always stress I am not an expert at all, but you can run sluices aggressively. I've run them aggressively. You probably will wash out gold, but once that low pressure point and each section of the sluice on the ripples is established, it will draw in all your heavies. So, there's one thing I will say though, it's a bit like ironing your shirt if you do that, it's therapeutic. And once you get into the rhythm and watching it all go through, I don't know what it is. I just find it really relaxing doing it. So we'll quickly process this bucket. Don't overfeed the sluice. Typically, if I'm going to feed the sluice quickly, I do that size of amount there. I want it to be clearing. It's still clearing down here, but cleared up there. Little amounts and often. Watch it clear down there. But we get a big scoop like that. It all backs up. And oh, that's not good. It will clear. But I don't think it's, it's not efficient doing it that way. And now there's the tailings pile. Time to clear the tailings pile.
Okay, we'll now let that sluice just clean itself out. Let most of the material work its way out and then just be left with the heavier particles. And we'll do one clean up from one bucket and just see what's in there. Right, what we'll do now, we will do a clear out. It's cleared itself enough now just to process that in a pan. So we carefully pick up the sluice, keep it nice and level. And then we can wash out. Use your scoop and wash out. Just carefully do this. And there are the concentrates from the sluice. So work them in with your hand a little bit. Yeah, that's fine. There'll probably be a lot of black sand in that. Well, let's just pan it out. Okay, we've done a clean up and there's gold in the pan. Don't expect nuggets. Don't expect to even see it, to be honest. But there's probably about 20 pieces in there of very fine flower gold. But if you can imagine spending a couple of hours with your mate, working away them gravels gently and processing it, you'd end up with visible gold in the bottom of your pan. Well, let's have a look. As you can see now there, that's a visible piece of gold there and here and there. Lots and lots of very small stuff. This camera never shows it up. There's a small piece there. So if you're doing the numbers, it's pretty good. So that's my quick video today on how I go sluicing. And if you're new to it, you're wanting to get into gold panning, gold prospecting and sluicing, I'm in the United Kingdom. We're not renowned for massive nuggets. If you want the nuggets, and like people keep telling me, go to the Klondike. There is gold around here. You just gotta work hard to find it. You don't expect to find tons of it either. It's just a hobby at the end of the day. It's a bit of fun. And they're the principles I always work on. We're here. So he gets a good walk. I'm out with my dad. Having a bit of fun in the spring sunshine. Thank you for watching. <laughs>